Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the April 9th edition of Morning Coffee Review. Jason Hartley here, ready to talk with my buddy Michael Chave about a bunch of diff different fun things in Bluebeam Review today. But uh, before we get to that, how's it going today? It's going good. Excited for our tips today. I threw the curveball at Jason and we stepped into the meeting and he was like, you got your tips? And I was like, nope, we're going to figure them out together. Um, but we got some good tips that we're going to go through and show in terms of what we think personally um, are some of the best tips. And feel free at any point if you wanted to, since you all in the community have been here since inception of MCR, feel free to add your tips into the chat if you want as well. If you have 15 or 5 or 2 or <laughs> 1, whatever, and we can go through and show them off as well. Um, so that everyone benefits from a mutual gathering of tips. But that's what we're going to be talking about today. Top 15 tips from both myself and Jason. Um, well, I guess just myself and we'll let Jason sprinkle his in. I, I envision the salt guy sprinkling yeah. his in. Yeah. But, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't, I don't think we're going to keep track. It could be more than 15, but maybe I'll keep track and see, see where we get, because I've got a, I've got a collection of my own and I'm sure you do too. And as I don't know if you alluded to it earlier, but we even asked AI what their top 15 tips are, and we'll see if we agree. Always, always. So without further ado, let's just get cracking at it. Um, I don't have any announcements from, there's no deals, there's no promotions, no support things going on that I know of. Um, one thing- Yeah, their trade-in thing went away. Yeah, that's, that's over. The last month. One thing I wanted to mention that did come out last week or the week before um, that I just noticed this morning because I was trying to get access to Bluebeam University for some reason. <laughs> I think maybe Michael and I are banned from there. Um, but <laughs> now, as of the 26th, let me just go back to it. As of the 26th of 2024, so two weeks ago, um, new users to Bluebeam University can use their Bluebeam ID. So it's going to make it a lot easier for newer users in your organization just to use the same Bluebeam ID that they're logging into Review 21 with to get access to Bluebeam University. So pretty cool. Was but, it not the way before? No, you had to create your own SkillJar account and it would, you know, if you didn't do it just right, you'd have end up having a different username or password. Uh, mine, uh, just, just, mine worked when it first came out and then now it always asks for an access code. So I just gave yeah. up. Yeah, uh, no access code, or it's asking for an access code for me too, and I don't have one, so whatever. Yeah, I don't understand why they make it so hard to get into this <laughs> thing that they push heavily mm -hmm. um, as free training or included training, because I guess you used to pay $250 to get access to Bluebeam University, mm -hmm. um, but it's included in your Review 21 subscription, but it's very hard to get into for some folks, some folks, because some folks it just automatically works. For us, it did for a little bit. And then now it just, we even reset our password, which is their protocol of like going through and resetting your password or creating a new ID. It just doesn't work. But in that segue, we'll go to our first tip, which would be internal training. How can we get access to it? So if you are partnered with us here at ATG USA, you also get access to what's called the global e-training, um, and there is some training in there. But outside of that, let me go to my subscription portal here to atgusa.com. So while you're pulling that up, you know, we wanted to talk about training for sure and give you those different options because not everybody has the time to just open up a software and figure it out, right? Because... It, if you just do that, if you just open up Bluebeam Review for the first time, not knowing anything about it, not knowing about some of the other things that we're going to mention today, you might be in a world of hurt or like, what's so cool about this, right? But once you get some training, whether you're watching MCR or using uh, Global E-Training or Bluebeam University, make sure you do something. Um, just don't try to figure it out on your own because you're going to miss out on so much. Yeah. We talk to a lot of folks that are just using it like a different solution that they've purchased prior to moving into it or um, just not using it to its full capacity, right? They found out the markups and that's all they think it can do, um, but there's a lot more to it, right? Absolutely. So, training. So again, Global e Access. Also, we've been running MCR for over three years now. <laughs> three years. 
crazy. So <laughs> with that, there's Bluebeam ticks and tips and tricks down here again, ATG USA. Over three years of content on the Bluebeam tips and tricks here. So you can view full podcasts. I found out also that Justin moved them over to podcasts here, and it's also here as well. Um, it used to just be this thing, but he organized it in here, which is great. So you can click this view full podcast series, and now you have access to the 161 videos at an hour long from the three years we've been running it. <laughs> right. It's it's kind of ridiculous. Um, that's a, that's a lot of time that's that's out there. Almost a whole month's worth of uh, content. But that's why it's not just us. We've got special guests on there. Some yep. of you that were tuning in today are on these videos too. So um, very very cool. Um, that's a a lot of a lot of work to have uh, documented out in the internet. But anyway, a lot so, of yeah. time for us, right? I mean, that's over 161 hours, right? So yeah, that's just wild. All right, so yeah, training would be tip one, which is sort of uh, sort of. I mean, it's we're walking into it. You're in training right now, right? We are trainers, so it's not necessarily you know, self-promotion. It's just, hey, wherever you're getting this from, you know, make sure you get some training, right? Yeah, just some more um, added benefit to the solution, right? So, yep. So uh, I should mention that these top 15 tips that we have are in zero order, right? So we're just going to sort of bounce around as per usual, which you should expect if you've watched any of these videos before. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, Maybe we can order them a little bit. So what would be your first tip if you opened up a review? Well, let's go back to this one. All right. So there it is right there. My, okay, I'm not going to put a number on it, but one of my biggest tips, and it goes along with what we just talked about. If you just open up review for the first time, you're going to be like, well, what's all this about? Right? My tip is to go up to review, select profiles, and go to review advanced. If anything, it's just going to give you a taste of, oh, wait, I can configure this tool to do what I want to do different things. And when you switch to review advanced, you start to see those toolbars. and You're like, OK, cool. This is more than just. Uh, a PDF reader, right? There's more options to it. And if you have a PDF open and everything lights up, you know, it becomes a different story. So one of my top tips, I'm not going to put a number on it because it could change by the day. But let's say it's in my top five for, for sure is profiles. Just play with profiles. them, see what they're at. I mean, if you're at that point where you can customize them for your use, even better, but go to review advanced, start there if nowhere else. Let's start with that as number one, because you're customizing your workspace, right? You're able to utilize review in the most beneficial way that you need to, um, to be efficient, right? So review profiles, review advanced. How do we create new profiles? Um, instead of overriding the existing one, you can go to profiles, manage profiles, and you can go and hit add new profile right here. So you're going to select a name, name it whatever you'd like. And then once you've selected it, it's going to copy whatever active one you have currently. So whatever profile that you like, the way it looks to start out with, you start with that active one and then it will copy it into a new one um, for you to what a, however you named it, right? questions for that anything else in terms of like additional items okay uh -huh. that was perfect so the next one is probably going to be in the same vein because when you start out typically i'm thinking of revit i want to edit my keyboard shortcuts right so let's talk about that next one tip, hot tip number two would be your um preferences for your keyboard shortcuts so you can go through well, hold on. Is that in preferences? No, they're right here. So keyboard shortcuts. So review keyboard shortcuts. These are the lists. So you can actually export out your list settings if you wanted to and share them um, with someone else or just go to a list as a text. But basically, this is all the existing keyboard shortcuts that you have. Now, if you have a, a mouse that has additional buttons, you can 
see what the value is here and assign it to like I have Logitech. So if you have the Logitech um, app, you can assign what Shift H to like you know your secondary button or something. I don't know. However you want to work it. Um, I remember when I used to be more on the design side every single day. I hardly ever touched my keyboard <laughs> that much. Mm. Um, I was using just majority. Well, no, not in Revit. So more in like AutoCAD when I was using AutoCAD more so. Um, line, right, and going through and just um, being able to remove cut paste. Okay, anyways, back to here. So yeah, shortcuts. You have the ability to go through and create a shortcut that's already existing from specific items. You can add the shortcut key if you wanted to, right, completely up to you. Um, and you can restore to defaults if you want to. You can import or export these out. Um, there's also commands here. So these are the built-in like UI scripts. So like paint would be copying properties to another one um, that you can also have command shortcuts to. I agree with this one. If you're really going to be a power user in review where you're spending you know, more than just 10, 15 minutes at a time, you know, using getting familiar with your keyboard shortcuts and customizing for your own use is a great way to do that. Um, tied into this tip, but I'm not going to add it as a separate one. Um, if you leave these as defaults, there are some benefits to that. Number one is that you can go to help and get a nice, you know, cubicle wall friendly, office wall friendly keyboard shortcuts guide. Uh, second from the bottom there. <laughs> or if you ever go to a conference and Bluebeam is there, they've got these mouse pads that have a lot of the stuff on there too. I, I know I've got one around here somewhere, but uh, again, another quick way to get leveled up in review is just by utilizing these things. That way, regardless of what profile you're in, you can just rip and uh, do what you need to. Yeah, I would almost agree, especially since you would have to import export this to like a studio session to have that attachment to upload those new keyboard shortcuts with this new environment. I wish your profile would move with your user ID, which it doesn't at the moment. Because um, if I sign into a different computer, my custom tool sets don't move with me or my um, keyboard shortcuts, right? So. Perfect. So keyboard shortcuts was number two. I'm going to actually write, well, no, because we can transcript this out. So number two is <laughs> number two hot tip is the keyboard shortcuts. So we're going to label okay. these. Don't say a number. Right. Because if Just... you say the number, we won't be able to transcript it out after. But I'll, I'll be able to grab the transcript out after. Um, I just want to make sure that we hit at least 15. Oh, okay, so you are going to write them down. I'm just going to keep track okay. of numbers. I okay. might write them down. We'll see. <laughs> um, number three would be utilizing the tool chest. So kind of in the segment and vein of going through and customizing your markups. So hot tip for customizing your markups. We did this a little bit uh, last one, but we'll go to, I guess, a file here. And I know for some of you, this seems like, OK, this is pretty basic, but you'd be shocked at how many people I talked to that didn't know this existed. They're either yep. not using it or they assumed it's just, well, I don't do flooring. You know, they see it and they're like, well, this isn't for me. Like, no, make it for you. And it just blows their mind. So that's why this is on the list. Yep. So hot tip number two would be customizing your tool sets, exporting these out, and also adding legends to them if you need to for more of a count perspective. I mean, hot, that's hot tip number three, sorry. Um, number three is customizing tool sets and going through and adding those into the area so you can reuse them or share them with your colleagues in um, your teams. The next one I would probably say would be we're not going to go that far down yet okay <laughs> um so we did customizing tool sets next one would be some of the batch features which we're not going to highlight most of them because some of them are going to get updated soon with ai um, the batch feature would be your overlay or compare documents or slip sheet so some of these are getting reworked with this new um, 
generative AI capabilities that uh, Bluebeam's going to introduce here soon. So compare overlay sheets, slip sheet. The main one I'd probably talk about is optical character recognition, which comes with every version of the new subscription model. So be aware, review 21, uh, well, I guess the old version, review 20, had st <coughs> um, standard CAD or complete tiers. Optical character recognition was only an extreme. Review 21 now has OCR in every single tier. And what is OCR? So basically, when you print out a PDF, you have two different types of PDFs. You have vector PDFs or raster PDFs. Um, raster PDFs are seen as images, and you get that pixelization that we're all familiar with when we scan a PDF is typically when it comes from, or like when you're printing from Revit, shadows are enabled. It's more seen as an image rendering <clears throat> versus a PDF format with vector-enriched data. Um, People keep joining late, but I yeah, so be okay. So basically, when it's a vector PDF, you can search text, you can snap to content. Um, now, if I get something scanned, sent to me, or printed out as a, a an image, and I want to search for things in that PDF, <clears throat> you typically can't because it's seen as an image, one single um, pixelized data, which can't have any vector rich optimization for it. So you need to run optical character recognition. Now in review 21, every single license here has access to OCR um, right here. So regardless if you have basic, core, complete, those are the new license tiers. Everyone has optical character recognition. And there was a tip. Is that what you were going to say? Nope. Okay. So Doug mentioned toolbars. We talked about this on last week. So you have the option to customize your toolbars. So we went through, how many tips were we at? I'm glad you wrote them down now. <laughs> I think that was number four. Okay, so that was number four. OCR, batch items. Because we're not going to get into the other batch items because the date for release is two weeks from now, right, Jason? Yeah, that's what they say. That's what they okay. say. <laughs> So we're holding out on those because I'm not going to show you all something that's going to change. Um, we'll, I'll create a quick tip when those things change, and then we'll show it on MCR as well. <clears throat> um, okay, so we're on number four. Number five from Doug is toolbars. So toolbars, going through and customizing those. Again, when you have review advanced, you have the profile organization of where these toolbars are. So toolbars are not panels. So I think everyone just to clear like distinction of terminology from Bluebeam, panels are icons that have flyouts, I guess. What would you say? A command that opens up to different selections within it. It's like a menu, but in an yeah. icon format, would you say? Sure. How does how does Bluebeam define panels? That's a good question. Do you want to look that um, up? Yeah, I'm on it. Okay, cool. What so from, yeah, panels have the ability to be selected, dragged out, and put on a second screen where you can't do that with toolbar menus. Toolbar menus are more command-driven selections of like attach or highlight, and you're going to use the command within the solution itself. So with that, can you move these around? You can. There's a three-dotted line. You left-click, hold, and drag. These can only stay in the user interface. They cannot be dragged outside the user interface, and they can be customized. So if you right-click on here, you can select additional ones or customize the ones that you want. Tune into our last video because I go in depth about this as well for, um, what do we say, Bluebeam Review for Architects, and mm -hmm. I don't know, what did we name it? I think that was it. But uh, the definition well, that I found uh, just is, architects. yeah. Panels are in-depth review features that require special interfaces. So, uh, <laughs> okay. That's even more uh, I feel like it's yeah. a menu, right? That has yeah. options, yeah. Panels are hidden behind their icons and found by default on the left-hand side of the interface. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's just a con collection of different tools. I don't know. Hilarious. <laughs> I thought they were going to give me a better answer. Um, okay, so moving forward then, 
talked about toolbars, you can move them around and then save your profile after. So if you move your toolbars around, it does cache local, right? Um, but you typically want to save it because if you move to different profile, it's not going to remember the cache local. So hit save to profile. Don't overwrite the original ones. So the OG ones are review, review advanced, quality, uh, quantity takeoff, and field issues. So those are the OG ones. Don't overwrite them. Please make a new one. But by all means, you can. And if you overwrite them and you want to get back to the original one, you can reset to default settings. Up to you. I'd prefer just creating one that's one that we can just, you know, make it however we want. Um, especially if you're in a, I guess, tip number, referring back to tip number one, two profiles no that was number one because you brought it up um don't overwrite your company profile <laughs> that's i guess yeah be aware of that this may be a company profile so even though you want to customize it don't customize the um, company profile because i know some folks use a company profile so make sure you're in a different profile um, and you don't customize yours and then have to reinsert the company profile because it's probably deployed with a company profile. Um, but okay, now we're on number, that was five. That was five, so this is six. Yep. So five was customizing toolbar menus. Number six, cool. So layers, so you have the ability to layer your markup capabilities. Um, I think that's a very important one when you're going through and maybe doing different things with your uh, markup. And we'll go through and do that, right? So I'm going to make sure my review tools are on a layer. I don't think these out of the box come on a layer, no. So one thing about layers. So when, when uh, Michael talked about some of the batch features, since Review 21 does come in three different subscription models, you're going to need complete for that. But this layer mm. thing got me thinking yesterday. You need complete. I'm, I'm foreshadowing to another tip here, but filter and sort on the markup list doesn't work if you don't have complete. And that's a pretty big deal. So layers are a good way around that. Let's say you wanted to have, you know, a, a designer review, an architect review, engineer review. You can put them on your own layer and then that way you can sort them that way too instead. So, so you're saying do, if you're not able to afford in the budget mm -hmm. like a complete tier license of review, then you could essentially use layers as that format. Perfect. Yeah. Um, I'm going to double check that you can use layers in basic though. <laughs> is there a way when using layers to not have all the layers turn on when you share a document for example you can just i would just print it without sharing the layer so you can print without the layer being active print not to your printer reprint sorry re-export as a pdf Hopefully that makes sense. But you have to print it to PDF. <laughs> I'll show <True>. you. <laughs> so, okay, here, we're going to go through. I added layers to these just by, and I'll, I'll add them to my next ones as well because I'm going to do two different ones because I'm going to say I'm marking up and then I'm going to do some cost estimating as well, right? So I'm going to go down to my, where did I put those cost estimating tools? Oh, they're at the top here flooring example so right click on your examples here that you have in your tool sets if they don't have a layer they have to be named the same so i just typically copy them so i'm going to do flooring for this one and i just again double click control c uh probably don't want the space there double click control c hit okay right click layer again control v flooring boom done then I can come over here and start making some of these markups that require a scale, which is fine just for this example. But basically now when I go to my panel, right click show layers, alt Y is the hotkey for that. It looks like two pieces of paper on top of one another. And for Nate, who is asking, can you just not have them print? Yep, export or print, just deselect those. 
um, for whichever one you're doing. So now arc, you can turn off, turn on. Same thing with your flooring. So if you're doing two different things, well, I don't need to look at my revisions from the architect. I'm going to go through and do a cost estimating. I now have them on a different layer. I can turn them on and off. And this is what Jason was saying for filtering. I'll let you segue back because I know you looked it up. So that filter function doesn't work if you don't have complete. This filter or, function. Yeah, and you can't sort. So like two of the biggest things I think are in the markups list. I mean, the markups list is very powerful, but they're up there. You won't be able to do that. So sorting is when you go down here, you'll probably just get this as default, right? I don't know what it defaults to if you don't have paid. Yeah, I don't know if you can click on, you know, uh, subject if it does that. That would be a bummer to miss out on. That's mm. worth. Like the difference between what it was at core and complete is eight bucks a month. So that's like. How many? How many? Dollars is that per day? Nothing. It's worth the frustration or the lot. It's worth not being frustrated by that, I should say. Yeah, the lack of capabilities with it, right? Yeah, I know, Doug. First, you got to show people the markups list. That's it's it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> okay. So, again, the ability to use layers would be another hot tip. So, that's number six. So then number seven's markup list. All right, we're going to jump we went to out that. of order. Okay. So markups list would be number seven. What is the markups list? So the markup list is defined as the ability to document your metadata on your PDFs. I think that's correct. I don't know. We'll have Mr. Artley um, look that up. Uh, generates, well, this is from... AI, but we won't read from AI. But let's compare, I guess, if you're looking it up. Generate markup summaries to automatically compile and export a list of markup annotation measurements with associated properties and quantities for reports and tracking purposes. Yeah. Your friendly you AI assistant. Mm -hmm. Okay. So with that, the markups list is going to itemize all of your information, regardless of what type of markup you make, in the markups list. So from here, even highlight, even copy paste, because you're going to paste a new markup, right? If I highlight it, it's going to even show what that content is that it's highlighted for your comments. Pretty wild, right? So it's going to itemize everything that you do in your markups list down below. Now, what Jason was saying is that in order to sort your data, and I guess I would want to confirm, like, well, what does it do if you don't have the complete tier? Um, since we have a complete tier here, like what does that look like? Can you not click these? So essentially in the markups list, you have the option to sort your metadata by whatever custom column or columns, we won't go to custom columns yet, of information that you want, right? Like I have these flooring estimates that I've done, but I don't want to have the total flooring. I want to sort my data by the label because I created a label for my measurements and I want to know the difference not between my total flooring of the building. And maybe you do, right? Like I have... 1,266.34 square feet of flooring that I need to purchase for this building, right? Maybe that's just an overview cost estimate. They don't care about the differences between them of like how much that's going to be. Well, client comes back. I want to know what the difference is if I do tile for this area or carpet for this area. Cool. So let's organize our data by label. Now I know how much carpet I have for this building and how much tile. So that's sorting by clicking the top of the column. And you can also descend or ascend um, by the up arrow or down arrow, and that is by alphabetical order. So from here, I have tile and carpet. I see I have one markup, two markups. It gives you a little indicator here, but I get the totals of those right here as well. Um, and I'm sorting by that data that I'm choosing. Would you concur, Artley? Exactly. Absolutely. Was that a good demo, Doug, since I know you live and eat here? <laughs> yep. Yeah. He, I'm waiting for him to give me his emoji thumbs up. He's on fire. Okay. With today. Yeah. Oh, you just get a yeah. You get at least you get something typed out. That's that's worth <laughs> There you go. There's the emoji. Thanks, there's Doug. the emoji. Okay. Uh, so what else? You already, you already uh, 
man, I had one right there, and the, and then I lost it. But I'm I speaking of losing things. Here we go. The ability to email from review, because if you've ever sent an email and forgot the attachment, which I know is everybody, please tell me I'm not the only one in the world who's ever emailed without the attachment when I said, hey, check out the attached file. You can email know. directly it tells from me review. Now. It tells I, I me know. now. But there was a time. Just There was a time when just, it didn't give you a pop-up. Yeah. yeah. Just hit the email button. It's going to pull up your email for you. The file will be attached. It makes it really easy. And bonus tip, you can customize templates. So you can have something that's already set up with, hey, check a look at this and send to Bob or have your signature in there. Like you can do a lot with that functionality. And I will say there's one point where I literally hit, no, don't search for the attachment. And that was supposed to attach something. So <laughs> yeah, that's, that's pretty funny. Okay, so where is that? Right. Well, since you're in the review advanced profile, um, there's a envelope icon right there, or you can also go to file and email and then below email are the email templates. So you can go say red lines, which you already have one um, created. So click on that, for example, it's going to pull up an email it's already set to go to me um, <laughs> with that file and pick up red lines. Right. Yeah. So, so you can also. You know, uh, you do have the email button on the toolbar. You can also customize your toolbar to pull up your templates for you. I mean, there's there's different ways that you can do this. Yeah, and I think it's great if you are consistently working with a specific team member that works as maybe like the designer, you're the architect, or let's say you're the engineer, you're emailing back and forth from a red line perspective for structural design. Um, you don't have to like, hey, let me type this whole thing out. Hey, I just redlined it. Let me quickly send it in my email template of red lines because I know it's going to Jason. He's the one that's always picking these up. This is the project he's working on. And I don't need to worry about saving the subject because it's named of the PDF and pick up the red lines is the comment because I know he's going to always pick up the red lines when I send them to him. Yep, makes it really easy, saves you some time, saves you some embarrassment. And, uh, you know, it's just a good way to get more consistent with your workflows. So email is definitely on the list, which brings us to number nine. Yeah, the last one. This was you. So this one will be basically going through and also how do you do those change uh, your template right here? Just hit new template. And basically you're going to type out the template name. Who is it's going to? And we're not going to the next tip yet. Just giving you more depth to that existing tip. Um, Who is it going to go to CC blind copied and then also subject and the name. If you don't add a subject, don't worry. It's the subject of the PDF is what the subject will be when you email it. That's preferable from my perspective, but maybe it's not for your perspective. And good old Grammarly over here just doesn't want to move out of the way. So hey, close. Okay. There we go. So I would say on that note, I got another tip and I'm not going to lose it in my brain this time. So on that same note, you can edit text in review. Um, I've seen a lot of people do this and they, they get really excited about it. So PDF content edit text will allow you to edit text that you see in a PDF file. Now, it's not the best if you're going to do anything more than a sentence. If you're just changing words, great. You can see uh, Michael's using this here. It works really, really well. If you need to format with paragraphs or you know, putting in page breaks or anything like that, you're going to have a rough time. So tied into this tip, you can also export to Word or Excel right here from review. So um, that one comes up a lot. Now, caveat to this, if you're not using a Windows TrueType font, you're going to have a rough time. A lot of the AEC documents that we're going to be working with came from Revit or AutoCAD or ArcaCAD or, or some sort of technical program. And some of those don't use TrueType, depending on your CAD standards or whatever. Like this one. Yeah, you might get something to come in there and you're going to have a rough time because you're not going to be able to edit it because the software can't do <laughs> things that don't have Windows fonts in them. So good note if you are looking at your CAD standards. Just use a true type font. Make it easier on everybody. This is good, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so there we go. That yeah. was text editing. 
So text editing was 10. You also put in export. So that's number 11. You can export out your content by going to PDF content, or sorry, file export, um, and the entire document into Word. Now the caveat for that is make sure if you didn't, if you received the, the document, typically most things are formulated because in this world dominated by Microsoft um, with Microsoft Word. Now, if it wasn't because some people have used like free versions, I remember when I was in um, my academic days, you know, I used, instead of paying for Microsoft Word, I used Google Drive document because it was free, right? And you can create document there. If you export it out to Word though, it didn't format correctly. So same thing here, if you're using a secondary solution and you exported it as a PDF and then re-exported it into Microsoft Word, it won't format correctly because that's the limitation of that comparison of software, not a limitation of review exporting it out. Correct. Cool. Uh, side note, I just got my acceptance email from Bluebeam Labs. So we must be getting ready to launch that. That'd be cool. Nice. So with that, um, there's that a question, was... side note, because in typical MCR fashion, we're going to stop for a question. Um, what's the best practice to get floor plans from P PDF to JPEG, good quality, to be used in a PowerPoint? Because you can export your PDF to PowerPoint from review. But you can also export a JPEG or a PNG, which is probably what I would do. Would do a PNG instead of the JPEG so you get the 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 background cutout desktop let's see i cleaned my desktop out for you like that there's only two things look at that <laughs> i don't know i kind of almost would use a sniffing tool it doesn't look like the best res yeah you just did jpeg I did the PNG. I'll do oh. JPEG next. And then we'll... Same thing. Yeah, okay. Maybe try PowerPoint. So then, yeah, I don't know if I've got an answer for that. Getting a better quality besides snipping tool, which is amazing. Yeah, that's how I was thinking of oh this takes a little bit reminder because i just saw my powerpoint for last year's au au submissions by the end of the month oh yep get on it if you've got an idea for anything there um I, Ooh, i like this one Ooh. And oh wait it just had a render oh I, I like this one yeah there we go there we go so there's the trick is that good enough for you can i i, I can't can i move oh it's everything is part well look at that like everything is what? its own item in here yeah oh i don't know about that maybe flatten it first i don't know all right we're running out of time. Okay. We're gonna My bad. We still got Sorry. we still got uh, six tips to get squirrels. Don't say so okay. last one was text editing, right? Yep. Um, so that brings us to number 10. Okay. So number 10 would be custom columns in your markups list. So we'll segue back into here. So you have the option of going through and creating custom columns, and that would be something for like flooring. I already know that I don't have a specific um dollar value amount for this one. So how can I go through and utilize that? within this PDF, right? So if I wanted to not have to export out to um, Excel with like dynamic um, uh, quantity link or something like that, but I wanted to have the data in here, and maybe you did want the data in here, and then you're gonna wash the data like Doug does through um, Power Query and then into Excel, it's up to you. And you wanna just add more value of information here. You can go into the markups list here, you can go to columns, and you can go to manage columns and you can go to custom columns and you can add a custom column here. And this one's going to be cost for instance here. And you can add it as whatever type of value you want from the options here. So text, numerical, formula. A formula would be like a number times a number to give you the 
X amount, right? So you could do a total in here as well. Checkbox, choice. We're going to do numerical number, but it's going to be a currency value. So format, not normal, but currency. And then from here, you have the option to include total. So as you see here, it gives you a number and the total number. So if I added another one, you can get a grand total. That's what this means here. So it's up to you to check this or not. You can always come back. Now, when it's added, it saves to the metadata of the PDF, meaning if anyone else opens it in review, they have that data of that PDF. Now, if I exit out of the PDF and close review of my cash local example, the custom column's gone. That's when we talked about earlier, saving to profile becomes important because that data will then save to the profile and you can reuse that custom column moving forward. Okay. Exactly. So you could hit save to profile, which I'm not going to do because I don't want to have it baked in here already. Um, but basically now from here, you have the option to go to markups and we have now, oh, I didn't hit okay. Typical Michael fashion. <laughs> but we've got a whole episode on doing crazy stuff with this. Um, there's a lot of things that you can be doing here, and I think it's it's underutilized, you know. And 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 all the calls that I get on per month, you know, I ask like, are you using it to this to this capability? And what do you mean? So um, it seems scarier than than it is, but it's pretty simple. Yeah, and then here's the total cost formula. This is going to be an expression of measurement times cost and then you have a currency value as well boom Ta -da. all right that brings us to number 11. perfect so we talked about custom columns now we're going to talk about the um additional option which is the ability to go through and use the uh collaboration tools so there is built-in collaboration tools um, which we talked about a little bit recently, which is the ability that they will be in the cloud at some point, i.e. released by Bluebeam, not by ATG first. Um, and then also projects, which is a limited storage and studio sessions. So this is a live collaboration on 2D or 3D PDFs. Um, this is a differentiator for Bluebeam, meaning it's the only solution that allows you to collaborate simultaneously with project partners um, and, and on PDF and 3D PDFs and what? And it's already included. It doesn't cost extra. You use the same login that you do with your software. So this has been a point of confusion for a long for a long time that you think Studio, since it is so powerful, would require an extra subscription level or or a subscription fee or or something. It's included. It's underutilized, but it's there. Um, an amazing tool, especially when it comes to sessions and 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 avoiding the Hey, I'm picking up markups that I did on Tuesday, but these ones came from Wednesday, and I got them from Bob over there on, on Wednesday. Like, we, you can have everybody collaborate on the same PDF at the same time and just have it in one spot. It makes life so much easier. Yep, agreed. With that, we'll also do our secondary one, which I know is a great tip, um, which would be document comparison. We're not going to show the document comparison from what, Bluebeam is going to release as AI at some point. We're going to do the copy. So control shift V is what we're going to do method of being able to grab content from one PDF to the next to show a comparison from that perspective. So how do we go through and do that? You can use the snipping tool, um, snapshot tool, not snipping in review, which is G or from the thumbnails, you can copy the entire page over to a new PDF as a snapshot. So this is the revised set, as you can see, a revision cloud, and maybe they weren't clouded. Um, you can right click and copy the entire page. I like to do just a region of data, but again, it's up to you. Since I already have a video of just region data, we'll do the full page. So here's the full page, right click, copy page a snapshot. You can go to the non-revised set, right? And now what I can do is just right click and I can, sorry, we'll do, Control shift V. So that's copy paste in same location. This is if your 
title block and everything or viewports or views didn't move. And basically now what I would do is as after it pastes, I'm not going to hit escape. I'm going to do multiply for the type of um, version it would be. And then I'm also going to right click and say what this um, change colors is going to be. And we'll just do colorize. And now from here, I can see an overlay. Um, typically, what I'll do is segue back to whatever tip number that one was for layers. Right click, add a layer and create new layer and do like rev one. Because then you can turn it on and off. Boom. And now I can see the differences from here. And you could have done the other way around, I guess, probably is mm -hmm. what you would have done. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple different ways to compare documents, and we will get more in depth in this in a couple of weeks, hopefully. Yep. Um, just to sort of say, uh, foreshadow into that, but good tip. Um, so back to the studio, since we got a question, is there a way to sort your sessions however you want? No. Nope. I didn't think so either. So you're kind of stuck. You're at that mercy um, uh, of, I mean, you can change it to sort by recently accessed and, and, and name and ID, but you can't say, you can't put them um, uh, labels. You can't do anything like that. So if the, it's just an, uh, an ID number that some people do, it, it gets kind of hard to remember what project was that again. So that follows more under uh you know housekeeping and, and standarding standardization for your firm on how things should be named agreed what number are we on all right so now we're ready for number 13. okay so number 13 would be probably adding scale to, to more than one page maybe yep. okay so from this hot tip basically you can see on thumbnails that i have one scale to a page and let's say we wanted all the pages to be set to a scale. You can do this when you're going through and setting scale or calibrating. So if you wanted to, typically I'd go to the measurements panel. And right now I have add scale to more pages right here at the top right. So I've already scaled this page. I can add scale to more pages. So if I wanted to here, you have the pages, which most people miss because they're just applying the single scale to the one page, which is typically selected you can actually pick what pages you want. So typically what I would do is say, well, I know that these two are the same scale, but my details aren't. So I can use control to select this page from my thumbnails panel, and I can apply scale to selected pages because those are the same scale. Pretty magical. Yep. So that ability to apply scale in whatever format you want from selected or all pages, Hey, Michael, how do I see that scale below on my thumbnails? It's under here labels and you have it checked or dechecked to see that. So the ability to select multiple pages to add scaled items to them would be another hot tip. Yep, I agree. Um, All right. So I have another one. You got another one? Yeah. Another tip? Go for it. Yeah. Number 14. Number 14 would be flattening markups before sending them out. So um to i guess there's a caveat there because if you're having someone pick them up you don't want to flatten them but if you're sending them out for coordination or something like that and you don't want people to manipulate the markups that's when you would flatten them right so how can we go through and flatten our markups under document you have the ability to flatten from here you can select which ones you want so let's say we're sending markups out but we also stamped it with our seal and didn't do it with the batch sign and seal method you can actually flatten just the stamps. So typically you just deselect everything. Whatever stamps you made can be flattened. Everything else will be able to be manipulated um, moving forward, but stamps won't, right? So you can go through and just say, do not mark allow markup recovery for our stamps, and you can flatten. If you do not markup recovery, it means they can't be unflattened later on. That's a good tip. Yes. Now, with that, also, you can flatten by markup, too, just by selecting the markup, right-clicking, and flatten. Yep. And this works really well if you are going to, like, try to block something out or um, something like that. Uh, we've, yeah. we've done that with, like, a white white rectangle or a black rectangle, you know, depending on what it is. If you've got a color in the background, um, you can do that instead of doing the whole uh -huh. race content. Yeah. 
So I guess my next one would be redaction because I didn't know this until someone asked me to redact a document. So if you have like things, because we have some examples, but we want to, you know, block out pertaining information, you can mark things as redaction. And maybe this is like everyone knows this before, but what's this revert as? Uh, uh, that's yeah. Funny. Is that new? That's new. That's a hundred percent new. I've never. Well, hold on. Never mind. I don't want to say hundred percent because everyone proves me wrong on here, which is great. Keep me accountable. This is blowing my mind right now. Oh, that's new. Okay, so I'm in a different PDF, and my revert as is grayed out. There's no way that we've that's gone this new. long without seeing that tool. That's new. Okay, thanks, Doug. That's new. Okay. So it looks like I can go to different versions. Is that because it's where it was saved? I don't know. That's wild. Revert as. When did that come out? Our... Warning, this document has unsaved changes. The data may be lost. Oh, okay, so let me save it to my desktop. Hmm. Interesting. And I go back to revert. Yeah, so, oh. But since I saved it. Oh, hold up a minute. I want to know how this works. If I go to this, save to desktop. Okay, this is interesting. So it's rev one, but oh, that's so okay. Let me make new markup. So I would have saved it from this philosophy. So let's go back. I would have saved it from this philosophy. And then let me go through and made some new changes. So I just checked for updates just to figure out where this came from. And I didn't update, so yeah, I don't I'm, know. I'm where still this on 21.0.50, but if you go to what's new, it shows 21.1 released March 26th, which mine doesn't say, which announces the auto align and uh, preferences search. And now there's a banner of you can now communicate contextual information about features that you're using without blocking you with alerts. Okay. Okay, interesting. So there's a couple of things fixed. So where So did when that... did that come out? I don't know. I don't know. So okay, so I saved this. Let's go back to file revert. Uh I don't get it. It's still seeing the same markups, so whatever. Yeah, I'm not seeing it in the list of recent stuff. So where did that come from? Is this meant to be in the addition of you making a ton of markups like you were supposed to revert here before you save it could maybe be. that's what that is i don't know okay well anyways there's yeah. a new revert tool okay so what are we at all right that brings us to number 15. okay what's a well what's our 15. what's our 15. um okay there was one i was going to say which is like so let's just see what the let's list some additional ones out and see what we think is number 15 because i like reply is a good tip i like adding captures to markups and 360 photos to markups i like to create bookmarks i like to label my pages um exporting out specific pages from a document setting um we already talked about scale, but viewports. So there's a couple more that I would prefer. Um, also, like exporting rooms from Revit into review as spaces. So there's a couple tips there that are way more, but I don't know. What do you think? I mean, stamps you, is another. You, you got some bonus ones. So let's let's close out our 15 with what you just mentioned, stamps. Yeah. It comes up a lot. Um, underutilized. Um, super handy. So our last official tip of the 15 will be stamps. And then we still got some time left, so we're going to sneak in some of those other things. Because you mentioned one that I wanted to cover as well, but I didn't know if it deserved a spot on the list. Okay. So stamps. So the ability to go through and create custom stamps. And by the way, there's a quick tip that out that I released for modifying the existing JavaScript. So it isn't actually creating your own full custom stamp but it is modifying the existing stamps from Bluebeam's website, right? So there is a quick tip. I wasn't gonna 
release it, but I said, you know, it, it's already there. It's documented by Bluebeam. So I just gave you an example of how you can go through and do exactly what Bluebeam documented and it's out there. So it is a quick tip. Feel free to check it out on the YouTube um, if you want to as well. I posted it on um, the page too. So if you wanted to, you can get this customized. You can also go back and listen to our ones from um, Liz since that one was recorded part of there. But if you're just creating a stamp with no JavaScript window, let me clarify that because you're probably wondering if you're new, this is what I'm talking about customizing. If you wanna customize the JavaScript window with information of forms being updated, you can do that from the existing ones. It's not adding anything new. Um, but if you wanna add anything new, you'll have to go through and um, it's a little bit more. And you can feel free to mesh this so we can have a conversation <laughs> about that. But okay, so just existing stamps are like approved, right? If this is something that you want that has what we call dynamic data, because you can put a date to it, that's things that are built in. You can go through and customize your stamps by going to stamp and hitting the pen icon or create new stamps. So I'll go through and create a new stamp real quick. And this is going to be super flashy because I know Jason has one that he wants to go through. I can put my text. When you add text, this is the dynamic information that can auto populate data that's from your PDF automatically. This isn't any JavaScript or anything like that. It just pops the data. Well, it is built in, pops data out, and then you're good to go. You right click and hit save. Now, if you do a save as, be aware that your stamps folder goes to a specific location. And if you don't save, save it in the stamps folder, it doesn't automatically save into here. So you'll need to import the stamp or save as. Uh, so just being aware that all of these, it does save here, but I'm saying if you go like to somewhere else, but you want someone sends you a stamp, you'd want to import the stamp. So it's in this document location as well. Okay. So that is my quick tip on just generic stamps. And that wraps up our 15 list, which gives us three minutes. So let's do what you just talked about. Another magic trick. This one's going to be something that maybe we should have covered last week in our review for architects, <laughs> um, since it is Revit based. Um, and that's just using spaces. So you can use spaces without Revit. Um, you can also Which create you AI images for a unicorn day. There we go. Um, <laughs> if you can fire up Revit and get to rooms in three minutes, let's see if you can do it. Oh, no. Still on review 24 uh, as of last week. Review 25, Civil 3D 25, and AutoCAD Wait, what'd you call it? Review 25? I do Revit all the time. 25, yeah. <laughs> um, all all the major and and InfraWorks twenty five, a lot of the good uh, Autodesk stuff popped out last week. Two minutes, two minutes. Come on, come on. Let's go, Bimbox. On. Yes. Um. So, man. Um. <laughs> you open. got a file that you know have has rooms in it. You're under pressure. Ooh, cheating sample files. I like it. Old Snowden Tower. Snowden Tower. Let's go. So within Revit, typically you've created rooms before. And if you want to export those rooms out as spaces in review, which help you organize like punch list items, come on, one minute. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Um, you can go through and do that. So from here, basically, you'll have your floor plans that you have that already have rooms created, which I'm assuming this one already has it created. So we'll go to level one which is this new one, and yeah, they already have rooms created, right? And I want to print these rooms out as spaces into review. You can, so you'll have the add-in, and I don't know which additions have the add-in. I'm pretty sure you can go and look it up. I think it's core mm -hmm. and complete here. Yep. Um, and I just hit create PDF, and I want to hit cancel because I want to change my settings because I don't know what it's printing um current view and sheets that's fine so let's go to selected sheets i just want to print out my first floor plan here and that's it great hit okay and basically you can export right here in your settings rooms to spaces so select that hit okay create pdf we'll save this to my desktop because i know we're going to run a minute over and i'm sorry but we'll do that so that we can see mm -hmm. it 
we're going to process this and it's going to go through and then open it up and review once it's done. And basically what I'll have is my rooms as spaces now and you'll see them. Mind blown because oh, well, maybe it printed as color. OK, it did print as color, but that's fine. Still, that saves quite a bit of time. No, it right? didn't. No, those are the spaces. So that is wild. It now shares over. It didn't used to share over the color of them, which is great. So there is now color associated to your spaces, which it didn't before. It used to always be blue, regardless of what you did. You'd have to recolorize it. Let's go. This is awesome because now you don't have to recolorize it. But anyways, yeah, so you have your rooms and you can now have the color associated to them, whatever you had in Revit. So that's pretty awesome. But the great point about this is now when I go through and do my punch list or anything like that in nature, because you can do like a delivery list for a room as well. You'll have your spaces here in review in your markups list, which Jason reiterated, it's important to be able to like sort. So now I know what's part of that room. What were you gonna add, Jason? That's it. You did it on time because it pulled up, and then you just you geeked out about colors. So that was worth the extra. <laughs> minute. So awesome. We got through 16 tips today. Very good stuff. We got a whole bunch of stuff planned coming up for the next couple months here. So we will see you next week. Have a good one out there. And uh, thanks for hanging on with us a minute late today. Yep. Thank you all. Have a good one. Hey there. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe and check out some of the other content on our channel.